This week we will be taking you with me on a shoot from Charlotte and we will explain some lighting setup so let's roll that intro and let's just start with it. Hey YouTube, what is good? So I'm gonna take you through two behind the scenes I've recorded last week during shoots. So, let's start. So, first things first, um, the footage, I will be showing you a shot with Charlotte. I will link her Instagram somewhere here. Go and follow her. How does it work when a model comes here for the first time? So, first things first, we exchange some images so that the model knows what to expect, what style we will be shooting, and if it's a collaboration, we decide together what images we will be shooting. I've sent some images, she sent some images, and then we start to look for a middle ground so that we both have something out of the shoot. So that's TF shoot, so that we both have an idea what we want to create when doing these images. So I always ask a model, what's your limit? And then depending on the limit, you start looking for images to know what style she's okay with. Then when she comes here on the day of the shoot, First things first, we unpack all the things she has with her. So she unpacks everything in the couch behind me. And when that's unpacked, we will be looking like, this can be a cool combination, this can be a cool combination. And then I ask the model, what light do you prefer? Like, do you like the images to be pretty lit? Or do you want the images to be pretty dark? That's always a discussion. Sometimes I have to show them what the difference is. And sometimes they just don't know and we just mix it up during the shoot. Also, when I'm testing something out, I decide the lighting and not the model. So that's something to communicate about pretty early on so that you know what you can expect from both sides. When she is unpacked, we always start with the outfit that is the least. So you don't want to start with the best outfit because it takes some time to get used being shot on the image being uh, in front of a camera, especially a big camera, since I'm shooting with a Nikon D850 combined with a 7200 lens, it's really important to be comfortable in front of it. So that's something. And then when I shoot, I always shoot my images onto two big screens in the studio. So we got one, I think it's 32 inch screen and then a big one, 53 ish screen on that side. Uh, which is mobile so we can move it around in the studio so that the model always can see what we are creating in images And then I ask them like do you like it? Do you like the light? What would you like to see different? There's always an open Communication so that you know both what you can expect from each other So that's an important thing Then we do the first set we shoot it and then after it we choose together so i go through the images in capture one and then the model can go like yeah i like it yeah no next one yeah i like it we make a pre-selection in capture one and once that's done out of that pre-selection we will be choosing the final images that are retouched now a lot of discussions are how many images do you deliver to a model that depends on how many styles you do like Normally I try to be, I deliver a minimum of five images up till 12. And if it's a really long shoot, it might go up. But 12 is probably maximum. I prefer to stay around the eight-ish. And then we do some different sets. And yeah, in the end we choose the images. And when she goes home, she knows what images she can expect. And when I'm shooting, she can expect them within like one or two days. So it, the retouching part goes pretty quickly with me, unless... It's something big and pretty editorial conceptual so you need a lot of inter a lot of retouching and a lot of mood creation in the image so that's how a shoot goes and now when you see the footage the first things we will be doing is measuring the light so that's an important one we measure the light to be sure that we know what settings we have to use on the camera and that's just a starting point. So it's not because the metering says, for instance, F8. You should be shooting at F8. And it's up to you to decide if you want it brighter or darker. But F8 is a base. Once you got that base, you can play around creatively with 
the settings on the camera and see what you can come up with. Now, because we are in a studio environment, the shutter speed is not so important. We try to stay at 1, 1 25th, 1, 1 60, max 1 200. So shutter speed is not so important in a studio environment unless you want to play around with dragging the shutter and stuff, but that's something we normally stay away from when we're just doing these kind of shoots. Now, for this shot, we are using an indirect modifier so it's a softbox a big one i think it's one meter 20 ish and it has the strobe in it it fires into the strobe and then it gets bounced out of it so you get a diffusion of three times so the light is really 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 soft now you can see the light coming in an angle a 45 degree angle aimed a little bit away from her that way you get that nice transition on the other side of the face because otherwise the half of the face would be lit and the other half would be in shadow. Now, because we angle it a bit, it will catch a little bit more light on that side of the face. And we also use the styrofoam to bounce the light back, a white side, to bounce the light back into the face, to lift up those shadows. So that's this set we've done. So nothing too crazy. And then it's me changing my angle. So the more I start, if the light is here, like on the image, the more I start moving to the opposite side of the light, the more contrast I create in the image. Now, for this modifier, there's not really a grid we can use to focus the light. There is, but it's not payable. It's so expensive. So you can move yourself to create a little bit more shadows. If you want the shadows to be darker, you just move more towards the light in your angle. Keeping that in mind, you just play around with the light, you create some soft images and then after this we also did a set on the ground where she's sitting down. We just lower the light, same vibe, same light, everything the same. Um, it depends the angle you want to prefer, do you want to go lower or do you want to create that perspective, it's totally personal. So that's the shoot with Charlotte. And I will run some images through here so you can see what the final results are. Hope you enjoy it.